Welcome to The Liberal Way, a series where we will discuss what the liberal way for dealing with various cultural and social controversies should look like. I think this is needed because too many people have lost sight of what the proper liberal way is. In this episode, I want to examine the controversy around critical race theory, or CRT, and the various responses to it. Specifically, I want to talk about two groups of people, those who support CRT because it sounds progressive, and those who oppose CRT and support politicians who would use state power to shut it down. Both are clearly not the liberal way, and in examining them, I hope we can clarify what a truly liberal attitude towards CRT should look like. First, let's examine the case of those who would support CRT because it sounds progressive. What we need to remember is that what sounds progressive is arbitrary, and what sounded progressive in one era could be seen as regressive and misguided in the next. Therefore, going by what sounds progressive is no different from following the fashion of the day, and foregoing independent thinking. Moreover, ideas that are the fashion of the day may also be illiberal. If so, embracing them would lead to a more illiberal future, and this is something that might not be easily correctable down the road. The liberal case against CRT is clear. At the most fundamental level, CRT is incompatible with basic liberal values because it doesn't treat everyone the same, regardless of immutable characteristics like race. Philosophically, CRT's prioritization of theories of power relations above commitment to objective truth is also at odds with liberalism's historical commitment to empiricism and objectivity, and inevitably puts long-standing principles like free speech and the scientific method at risk. Looking at it from a big-picture perspective, CRT could be seen as a wedge to introduce a fundamentally anti-enlightenment worldview into mainstream Western politics, with the aim of eventually supplanting liberalism and its associated values. This means that if we don't want liberal values to be supplanted by postmodern values, we need to oppose CRT, period. Next, let's consider the case of those who oppose CRT and support using state power to shut it down. This is important to look at because an increasing number of conservative politicians are now building an anti-woke brand based on policies like banning vaguely defined divisive discussions on race in schools and banning textbooks that contain divisive content on race, again without clear and objective criteria. Previously, I said that I'm particularly concerned about those who started opposing postmodern critical theory on liberal grounds, but they've clearly lost sight of what those liberal grounds they were defending look like. They have lost sight of why things like free speech are important, and why emotionally charged action is suspect. Instead of defending and rebuilding the liberal way, these people support illiberal means of combating wokeness, and are hence contributing to the erosion of liberalism in Western political culture. The liberal way of combating bad ideas is by using our own free speech to expose their flaws, and ultimately win the argument against them in the marketplace of ideas. Using government power to shut down ideas we don't like is something liberals should never support, period. And we must remember that there is a very good reason for us to take this stance consistently. Free speech must be upheld in a consistent, universal, and content-neutral way, or it will cease to exist within a generation. The other important point is, the marketplace of ideas is only credible if it is truly fair and free for all individuals and all ideas. Of course, the lack of a strong, truly liberal movement against CRT and postmodern critical theory more generally has pushed some people towards illiberal, the illiberal type of anti-wokeism in the past few years. This is why we must take a stance for the liberal way and make the liberal position clearly heard. We must be brave enough to upset people and break alliances if this is what is needed to uphold the liberal way. We need to remember that the future of Western political culture is at stake here.